Well, it's Thursday the 28th of February, uh, at the last day of February, uh, which means tomorrow is the, uh, the first day of spring officially uh, here in Val d'Isère. So welcome to another live broadcast. Uh, current time is about uh, quarter, to, quarter to nine on uh, as the Thursday morning and um, sort of the Christian school holidays at the moment, but uh, in the next sort of 10, 15 minutes, lots of people will be making their way down as the lifts open. This Soleil's gondola over my head here, they're just doing the test running of it this morning. And as I pan around to the distance, uh, you will see up the Monche Valley, very, very beautiful conditions. Uh, it's gonna be another warm day, but don't let that fool you. Those people have been uh, tuning in regularly to my broadcasts on um, uh, Instagram, as well as uh, my regular written blog on snowheads.com, the view from Valdez and the Spaskili, uh, and all the other channels that I uh, do update on, such as Twitter, um, at Steve Angus Snow, you'll be seeing that um, we've had about two or three weeks now of this uh, very, very dominant high pressure system that's brought warm, uh, warm weather and uh, not even a hint of a cloud for most of the time. And uh, um, there has been literally no clouds in the sky for the last uh, two to three weeks, but that is uh, set to change. Please, uh, if you've got any questions, then do ask away. Um, and of course, please do keep sharing on social media. You can do that by uh, tapping on the uh, the little uh, dots down in this corner of your screen uh, and sharing across uh, the social media so more people hear about it uh, and most importantly of all here on Periscope where I do a live broadcast about once a week uh, people um, at Periscope will know that they're popular broadcasts uh, and of course keep tapping away on the screen those little hearts come up and that's an indication that uh, the uh, you're enjoying the so yes, uh, in fact, um, we have got a chance of a bit of a change uh, of uh, weather coming up. Um, it looks like the high pressure system is going to be replaced by some, uh, uh, some fronts that are going to sweep across the Atlantic Ocean. And that quite possibly could lead to a little bit of snowfall coming our way. However, it is a very big however. The uh, freezing level is still exceptionally high for this time of year. The freezing level at the moment is up to about uh, nearly, well, sometimes up to get, getting on for 3,000 metres. So it means that the freezing level has got to drop a lot. Otherwise, any precipitation, unfortunately, is going to fall. Uh, but um, when the weather systems come in slightly more from the north uh, and east, uh, sorry, north and west, sorry, it does tend to uh, drop the temperature down a little bit. So I'm hopeful that certainly the top half of the mountain is going to get snow uh, and the bottom half of the mountain after a day or two of the, the low, low pressure system working its way in will get snow as well. But uh, the other factor is um, whether it comes with any wind because wind is always the, the crucial factor. Uh, if it's windy as well, then uh, that makes it pretty miserable. Um, and of course, after two or three weeks of a melt-free cycle, uh, the current avalanche risk is very low. It's one in the morning going up to three in the afternoon and that's just due to the temperature. Uh, so the actual snowpack itself is actually incredibly stable now. Um, it just, uh, it's gonna be interesting when snow falls on top of it because that could have quite an impact it could make things very very unstable so um, I have to keep a very close eye on how the uh, how the snow and the temperatures and the wind uh, interact with each other because it could be a case that if we get a lot of snow very quickly uh, that uh, things could be exceedingly unstable for 24 to 48 hours and maybe longer than that but if you get small top-ups of snow sort of day after day after day uh, and it's allowed to sort of consolidate after those smaller snowfalls then that could actually be better for the stability of the snowpack. So, so those people that have been out here for half term, um, it's, um, it's sort of uh, coming towards the end of the first week of the Prisian holidays and the last week of the local holidays, which means next week is a relatively normal day in terms of uh, how busy it is on the slopes. We have got the Prisians once again on holiday next week. Um, but uh, after that, we are well and truly into um, the uh, non-holiday period and the springtime conditions. As I said at the beginning of the broadcast, uh, it is officially the first day of spring tomorrow, um, but that uh, means we've still got another two months left of the ski season here in Val d'Isère and our neighbouring resort of team that make up the Espaskili. And uh, if you're not aware, the, the name Espaskili uh, came after Jean-Claude Killy, who's a very famous um, local um, a resident uh, who won all the sort of available alpine medals at the 1966 um, Chamonix Winter Olympics. So he's very a very local legend and that's why it's called the Espas Kili. Uh, I guess uh, for those of you from the UK, he's the equivalent of our sort of David Beckham, if you like, sort of not only good at his sport, but also sort of a bit of a, a pin-up boy as well. 
So in local news, um, apart from the school holidays um, sort of dragging on a little bit more, um, the slopes are holding up pretty well. Um, we've had lots of events like uh, uh, last night there was a cross, um, sort of a, a cross mountain um, skinning race that was going up from the dive. So now we've got the pedestrian evening. Uh, every Wednesday at the moment, I've just found that, I didn't realise it was happening. And there's some sort of like a weekly demonstration at the top of the Celeste Mountain. So last week it was Birds of Prey. Um, Yesterday it was uh, the avalanche dogs. I'm not sure what it is next Wednesday, but sort of from two, three o'clock in the afternoon, each day, um, so each Wednesday at the moment, there's a good display at the top of the Celeste Mountain. And uh, whilst I'm talking about sort of the names of some of the mountains, um, I've also always been asked uh, by people that first come here to Val d'Isere when they look around from sort of down here at the bottom, they're always a little bit apprehensive when they look at the size uh, and the steepness of that mountain in the, in the picture there, the Belvard, or if I pan around, for example, uh, the Soles Mountain there, or further around in the distance up towards the, the Fournier end of town. Uh, Val d'Isere is an upside down resort, so most of the runs down into the resort are pretty steep, so that's where most of the reds and the blacks are, for example. And then on top of the mountain top, you've got sort of plateaus, which keeps it a little bit, uh, a bit flatter, so you've got greens and blues, generally speaking, at the top of the mountain. So that means that um, it's an advantage from the point of view you can get up there and enjoy the uh, sort of the, the easier terrain if you like at the top of the mountain. Certainly on sunny days like this, it's fantastic. And again, if you're a beginner, it's really, uh, really beneficial. But it does mean that the terrain down into town not only is pretty challenging, but also gets uh, pretty, uh, pretty cut up and nasty later on in the day. Uh, but uh, that's, I suppose, what the challenge of a runs like the Faster Belvard, uh, this one up behind me, are all. So I'll be signing off in a second or two, um, but if anybody does think of anything, then please uh, do ask away. Uh, in terms of um, some of the best runs at the moment, because we've had warm temperatures, some of the best runs on the mountain, um, we've had to treat um, it a little bit like spring snow conditions. So runs such as the Moraine Red Run up on the uh, Val d'Isere Glacier, Pisa Glacier, um, which soften up a little bit in the afternoon, but don't get too much traffic, have actually been some of the best runs. Um, Whereas conversely, some of the runs that are down in the shade, um, down into the dive, for example, have been some of the worst because they, uh, they're not getting any sort of sunlight on them. So they're still pretty firm indeed. So I'm gonna sign off in just a second, folks. Just one question coming there. Are the colder temperatures and more snow on the way? Yes, um, uh, there are some colder temperatures and snow on the way. Um, freezing level is gonna drop down from the current average of about two and a half thousand meters down hopefully to closer to 2,000 meters uh, and as well as that um, there's certainly some precipitation coming so things will get a, a good freshen up and hopefully with a bit of luck we'll have some powder on the way. So there we are folks please do keep sharing please do keep asking questions and tuning in and I'll do my best to keep everybody updated. So from a, a snowy hopefully snowy Val there to be um, where we are currently in springtime conditions uh, I wish everybody a very good day and uh, please do uh, keep tuning in and if you're coming out and you want any lessons, then please do get in contact. Ta for now. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in and please keep sharing across social media. If you've got any questions about lessons or any queries at all, uh, then please do get in contact with me uh, about ski and snowboard lessons as well. I'm on across social media at Steve Angus Snow is my handle. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.